Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Shirtless Painter, where anyone can paint, and anyone can paint anything. What's better than one shirtless painter? Well, I think you're looking at it, two shirtless painters. And today is a very special episode, because today I'm joined by the man himself, musician, author, actor, writer, and fellow artist, Mr. Henry Rollins. Henry, thank you so much for joining me today. It's not often you get to chisel the Donises like this in one room, so I could think of no better thing for us to do than to paint each other, if you're cool with that, Henry. Yeah. Great, let's get started. I encourage you all to take off your shirts and paint along with us. We're gonna be flashing some of the colors on screen. Let's jump right in. Right. I've already jumped in. All right, I'm gonna just go ahead and get sort of a Henry base going here. So you're really, you're checking me out? I need to sizing start you up. see a whole different side of you. But interpret me however you see fit. All right. You don't have to make me beautiful, though, hey, I wouldn't complain if you did. Now, Henry, you work in many different mediums. I think that's I'm just desperate for work. I'm just trying to stay fed. Okay, so music is, is sort of where you where it all started. Yeah. And, of course, you're, you're a prolific writer and author. You've written many books, and you write an article. I own the um, book company, so I sleep with the owner every night. Perfect. So I don't, there's not a rejection slip waiting for me. That's called a, a hack. That's what we call that. A life hack. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I see that on the Huffington Post. Yeah, yeah. A life hack. Yeah, it came from the, just the DIY idea. Like, you want to make a record? Well, okay, go make it. Yeah. Why are you waiting around for someone's permission? So I started doing that with books. You're now dabbling in photography. Is that yeah. I, I started... I travel pretty far and wide. I've been to about 100 countries and all seven continents. And many years ago, I just started dragging cameras with me. And I started feeling the limitations of kind of the, the smaller point and shoots. And a, a friend of mine, this woman I know, she was looking at some of my photos and she said, you have kind of an eye for this. Let's get you a real camera. You know, we can switch out lenses and let me teach you like f-stop and I'll teach you how to shoot in manual. And so she gave me a couple of lessons, and I bought a couple of photo books, which are actually really instructive. And I just went out into the world and just started taking a ton of photos. And that proved to, you know, you, you come back from a day of shooting photos in the street all day, and you're like, okay, don't use that f-stop anymore. Right. Or, you know, you just learn to, uh, you, you learn to make it better. Oh, boy. Okay, well, Henry, I hate to... Just to jump in here, I did. I just added your eye. You are cry accidentally crying uh, in it's this okay. image, but this is a natural drip at work. I'm, I didn't mean to. Um, I, didn't mean I to cry make when you I'm cry. jet lagged. If I don't sleep for like a day, I'll get emo and I'll watch some dumb movie in economy on my way somewhere. I was raised in Washington D.C. You know, every third building is a is a museum or a gallery, and my mom. She's quite the art maven, and so I got dragged to, you know, the National whatever museum and this gallery and that gallery all the time. So I always admired painting, but I never, never had any interest in doing it. Who are some of your favorite uh, visual artists out there? Well, as far as painting, I've always been a fan of Bacon, just because the way he makes people look, the way he cuts them up and distorts them, that's kind of the way I see people. Right, very grotesque. Yeah, but real. One time a few years ago, I was at the Warhol Museum, and I'd you know, seen a million Warhols like in books and on TV, documentaries, but when you go to the museum, or whatever, the, the gallery, whatever, and you see them full size, like you're in a room with them, it's almost kind of hard to keep standing up. I mean, they almost knock you over with their intensity. Yeah, this is a controversial opinion from Henry and I. Andy Warhol was actually good. Uh, I, I, I not, won't name names and call anyone out, but I knew somebody. I was at her apartment in, the, in New York years ago, and she's got a Warhol, Geronimo, well, you know, one of those. I was like, yeah. wow, that's so cool. Where'd you get that? And a person we both know who's kind of a music independent guy, uh, he's, he's been in a couple of very well-known independent bands, like, oh, he works at the Warhol factory. He's the one who screens these. And he actually even signs the name. Warhol oh, doesn't wow. even come, can't even be bothered. So he just took this home and gave it to me. So I go, that's a Warhol. She goes, kind of. Right. It's actually a Dave or a Mike or, a, or yeah. whatever the guy's name is. Yeah, was. yeah. And, and you've probably heard this guy play on a record before, but this was the money uh, he was making between the tours, like in vans where independents didn't make any money. May I ask who or 
talking about? No. I, maybe I, you know. That little story gave me a bit of contempt for Warhol. Like, okay, what a scam. And then I was in Germany one night, years later on a night off, and there's this documentary on Warhol. It's in German with subtitles. And the German, you know, typical German guy, right in his face, like, you know, but that's fake. You're just knocking these off. You're painting a soup can. Who cares? And he looked at the guy and said, hey, I got to bring home the bacon. I mean, he was having a, kind of a laugh at the art world and the pretension of it. But in his own way, he was not messing around and was really pushing it himself forward. A guy I know, uh, kind of a famous artist, Robert Longo, works in charcoal. And uh, Glenn Branca, all these no-wave people, are, he's painting because they're his friends. He's from that whole no-wave scene. Uh, he was in a band called The Theoretical Girls. Anyway, he, he does these massive, in, like huge uh, charcoal drawings, and they're all over the world. He wrote me the other day, he just came back from some, you know, multi-country, you know, from Moscow to Berlin. He's, he's huge, and for good reason. He, he's incredible. And he directed me in a film, uh, Johnny Mnemonic, me and Keanu Reeves. And Remember it? Dolph Lundgren, the bestest guy. I think he was insecure in that film because he didn't have a plastic sword or a pelt. Oh, he, Dolph, he, he wasn't he didn't very feel... friendly. No, he's not a very nice man. He yeah. didn't like me. I tried. I turned on the charm. Come on, every Dolph. Day. What's not to like about every day? Are you like morning, Dolph? You know, yeah. I'm like, okay. That you're on. I don't put many people on notice on the show, but Dolph, you're on notice. Yeah, he's like six eleven. Come on, Dolph. Yeah. Gave me a great black eye. But anyway, Longo. I met Longo because he was the director, and we've been buddies ever since. But when you see the amount of work that guy turns around and like how no BS his studio is, it's just this room was just stuff. And I, if you see photos of his studio, and I've interviewed him before, and you get the idea of his work ethic, it's so zero glamour. I mean, me, I live here in the studio. I right. sleep on the corner there. I wake up. And this is it, a windowless room? This is it, yeah. And I love the outdoors, uh, but I'll paint them. I'll, you know, if I want to see the outdoors, I'll paint them. Well, if that's I what Kafka said. He said, you don't need any stimulation. You have it all. You just sit in a room and let it come to you. He said, if you sit still long enough, it can't help but reveal itself to you. He said, it'll, like, it'll undulate in front of you. It can do nothing but present itself to you. So that's how you are. That's pretty much me to it, too. Yeah, you're the shirtless painter that doesn't need any damn windows. No. Do you have any friends? No. No. You just have the paint. Nope, just the paint. These guys are my... Your David, only friends. Michael, Janice, Louise, Kevin, Stephanie, Christopher, and Stephanie S. These are my best friends right here. Yeah. And, of course, Henry. Yeah, yeah. Who's been the best guest so far besides me? <clears throat> uh, let's see. Who have we had? Uh, Amy Mann was a great painter. She and I have been buddies for many years. She's great. She's she's fantastic. You just, um, you just painted yourself there, buddy. Uh, did, I felt that. No, leave it, Bluebeard. It's good. Uh, the canvas doesn't... Uh... Actually, just hold on a second. I want to capture that. I'm, 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 got, I'm good. Okay, yeah, great, yeah. great. All right, so Henry, I will tell you that I gave you... You wound up with sort of an arm wound. Your arm got severed oh, at some point in the in the process here. It hasn't gone all that well for me over there. You're crying. Your your arm fell off. This one is sort of left to the, the viewer's imagination. Wait till you get in your 50s. You'll see. You'll start crying. The arms start your going. Your arm will fall off. Yeah, the arms come off at the worst times. Yeah, I've got a few gray hairs, but, th you know, knock on wood, none of my arms have fallen off Wait, yet. Pull up. Or, you know. you're, you're talking to your dealer's kid. Right. Sure, yeah, yeah. You know, showing him the tattoos and the war wounds. Next thing you and know. And all of a sudden, thunk. Thump, yep. it's on the floor. And the kid Get the takes broom. it. Yep. Yeah. Get the broom, we lost an arm. I painted you, man. I'm a minimalist. I didn't get you from a few years ago when you had the gut and the mohawk. Oh, right, yeah. Those and all the were, bad tats. That took a lot of laser surgery a to get rid of those. A lot of laser surgery. Those bad tats. Yeah. Now I've only got good tats, as you can see. Yeah, yeah. No, I like that one you're sporting. Uh, am I am I crazy? When we said we were gonna paint each other, part of me wanted to paint each other. You know what I mean? Well, I like, want to paint you. I mean, really paint you. All right. You know what? Screw it. I have a couple of rules. Please. Uh, no swastikas. I I must say I'm a novice artist, but I'm already I prefer the texture of your skin to paint on than that canvas. The canvas was alienating and cold. Thank and you. And this is more of a kind of an analog experience. I agree. I yeah. agree. That was sort of an MP3. This is a nice vinyl record I, that we're painting on right now. There you right go. I, I couldn't have said it better. All right. So I'm just sort of 
encasing this um, spider in sort of a red, red area here. Yeah, some artist got to me before you did. Yeah, what is all this? It's Reagan era. I'm not blaming Reagan <laughs> for the art. I'm just saying it, it. I'm old, and so are these. If you could, if you had the opportunity to for, somehow forcibly tattoo Ronald Reagan when he was alive, what would you? What would wow, you? Wow, that's a really good quick black flag bars. <laughs> yeah, <that's>, yeah. <laughs> have to be. That'd be perfect. I think so too. Yeah. Here we'll give you sort of a nice little flower. Oh, nice. Wow. I'm really coming alive. Yeah. 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 Here we go. A little pop of color in there. I, I'm 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 apologizing in advance for my kind of stultifying minimalism here. I don't think dynamically, unless there's violence involved. Just as long as no one shoots me in the stomach when this is all over. No, I'm not trying to line you up for a kill. Um, I'm just kind of working off your navel. Oh, sure. It's Yeah, it's yeah. nature's focal point, yeah, the navel. Yeah. As you, yeah. All right, so I'm going to give you a little flower stem here. Oh, and we'll have this sort of emerging from your, your navel. Right, as all good things do. Sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you ever give the guests peyote, or they have to bring their own? We should look at guys. Do we have any peyote laying around, or is it is it BYOP? Like, when you guys are in your fifth season, like when you get some like big budget, I say drugs. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah I think. And that's... make it like a twenty four hour session. Like we don't leave here. Like you don't go back to your bunk. And no, we just, we just I, I will here. stand here until like, we, one of us drops. Like, or a, the... like for a benefit, we could do like a like a paintathon. We just paint each other until the other falls over. I'll do it in a second. Yeah. Yeah, really, Henry. Anytime you want to jump by, just, just come is, by. This and is great. Do some painting, yeah. Yeah. All right. Let me get a little water here. Oh, oh look shit. at you with the bars! I didn't see the bars. Oh yeah, well, this is just that's a, fantastic. Just a little nice. Just a little, you know, tattoo that I've yeah. had forever. All right, so we'll get, let's get some blue in the mix here. Maybe we'll do sort of a... Oh, you're crying too. <laughs> crying pink tears. Actually, I see a thing that could happen here. This is, yeah. Gonna go a little North Korea on you. Please. Thank you. I always say please and thank you when you're painting someone. Painting a friend. Yeah. Now, Henry, you're you're a big music fan, obviously. Sure. What, I've I've just I'm just personally curious as we're painting each other here. Who's mm -hmm. what? What are you listening to right now? What's a, what's a new record that you're into? Uh, I listened I, last night. I listened to the remastered uh, version of uh, Joe's Garage by Frank Zappa. Okay. Amit Zappa had worked really hard remastering it, you know, because Amit, the son, has kind of taken care of the mm -hmm. uh, dad's catalog. And so um, he, he was telling me how, what a great job they had done on it. And I listened to it yesterday, and I must concur, it's incredible. I listened to the new Ty Siegel EP that he did, and all the money's going to uh, the ACLU. Oh, nice. And like every other Ty record, it's fantastic. The new OC's record, Orc. I played that twice over the weekend. Very, very good. Who's your top uh, guy or girl? Like, who, who's your... As far as like a record or a band? Just, or? Yeah, musician, band. Oh, Stooges. Stooges, okay. Yeah. They're as important to uh, music like, uh, like water to life. Oh, man, uh, live. Whoops. Whoop. I dropped my brush. Allow me. Oh, thank you. you. Gonna, That's yep. an artist looking out for the other artist. Always look yeah. out for the other artists. If we don't have each other's back. We got nothing. We got nothing. All right. This is it. This is us. My artists. idea of fire is turned into caca. <laughs> so fun. who says you can't have some laughs with painting? Have some laughs. Don't take yourself so seriously. Don't take it so seriously, man. You got to lighten up. Life is short. Yeah. I'm making a really... Uh, are uh, an activist statement with you. I'm gonna have to ask a favor of you, not to wash for days. I won't. I won't. Just uh, yeah. hold on to it. Uh, it's I, that's a promise. That's a guarantee. Anyone who works with me here in the studio will start to smell me keeping that promise. Yeah, they're used to it. It's I've nice. talked to some of the people you work with. They're cool, but they put up with a lot of your. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. They're saints. Every one of them. Yeah, you should pay him better. I really should. I really, really should, but... 
Just can't a, swing it right a, now. A six pack and a bag of bad arena weed is is gonna cut I mean, it. These guys for like this that. season. They like that yeah, stuff. but you know they're adults. They're gonna start looking around. They got options. These people, they've got options. Mm-hmm. People are on the phone. I keep hearing. Have that. you ever thought of franchising this? Employing different shirtless painters yeah. to host. Yeah, yeah I, I think I would be down for that. Sort of train them and send them to different cities. Exactly. And, yeah. Yeah, I think that's something we'll definitely look into. Yeah, I think you should you should think about that. Um, uh, this is uh, I'm painting the scorched earth of uh, I guess it would be California. Yeah. I'm not advocating the destruction of California. I'm just saying this is probably the point where the IC. Uh, the intercontinental ballistic missile will be able to make contact. It'll probably be the West Coast. And L.A. will go back to the scorpions and the coyotes. It's good. I just want to be one of the first to say scorpions and coyotes. I love you guys. But I'm your friend. So. I, I was uh, this uh, woman I know was uh, working over at my place for a few days and uh, she went back to uh, the East Coast and she said, I got all this food. You want you want it? I said, yeah, I'll take the food. And, you know, free food. It just, sure. always, it just tastes better. And so um, she left me with this big bag of spinach. So I opened up the spinach and a scorpion was in it. And so I kept the scorpion in my sink. And then I put him in a jar. Her. I, I didn't, I wasn't able to get gender specific. Right, they're tough to, to spot. Yeah, yeah. Because they won't sit still. You're like, right. come on, come, come on, on. Just let me sneak a pee. So just like lift up the tail. Ow, ow, ow. You know, and so I eventually uh, took the cup uh, outside and, and turned it loose. It looked back at me, waved. <laughs> One little scorpion tear. Single tear. Scuttled, scuttled off. Kids hate eating spinach. Try being a scorpion locked in a bag of spinach. So yeah. You think your life's bad. Try being a... A lonely child in Washington, D.C. having to eat scorpions. Try that on for a second. Mom, what's in my spaghetti? Shut up and eat it. That's yeah, what she'd say. Yeah, next time one of you guys asked to have the crust cut off your peanut butter and jelly, think about crunching on a scorpion. And yeah. you don't even know the gender. And you know what? It could come to that. Okay, so I'm adding sort of a Wi-Fi signal to your... Uh, <laughs> That's good. To your... Te- whoops. To your tattoo right here. What is this one? What is this symbol well, right here? That's the Anxious and logo. It was a do-over. And that's a, that's, that's a cover-up. Oh, really? Yeah, it's hard to see. But the Wait, four... if you turn this way, I started to see it. If yeah, you see, turn towards the light. See? It's the four faces of uh, the guys in Motley Crue are underneath it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I could see them. There's yeah. uh, there's Tommy Lee. There's the other, the, what is it, Nikki Six? Yeah, right here. So you, you could see all the guys there. What made you uh, change your mind? Uh, just people started talking. People get jealous. Sure, a lot of people lot jealous, of jealous of me, you. man. And there's this, there's such a thing as looking too cool, which I yeah. think you may have run into. There. They get so mad. Yeah. yeah. Well, I didn't know you could do this. I just <laughs> I was cleaning the brush, but it looks so good. Oh yeah, here I'll, I'll that looks kind of yeah, fun. Go, yeah, yeah, tit for Give tat. Give sort of a pox here. I'm yeah. working with red, so yeah. this will be sort of a, a pox on me. A pox on yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. You don't have to decide now, but when you leave and go home, yeah. uh, do you think you might go to the tattoo shop and get any of these made, Again? made permanent? Um, Again, don't don't feel the need to, to humor I'll go me, for that if you go for the bars. I, you don't have to ask me. Because that, that color scheme, I'm loving the color scheme. If I have Henry Rollins, the only way I would feel comfortable getting black flag multicolored bars on my neck is with Henry Rollins' personal blessing, which I believe we have cards and film and all these cameras so yeah. i it, say i say go for it okay mom <laughs> see you at christmas here's a big question for you Henry. Yeah. what is is rock and roll okay or is it here to stay oh it's fine it's really good right now music's always fine because there's always young people who are agitated and plugging in so it's always going to be fine you never need to worry about that and there's always going to be the mediocre there's always going to be people who want to be on the radio, and they they go at music like as a corporate concern. And when someone says, well, music's boring now, I'm like, no, you're boring now. Or old bastards like me, I'm noticing some of my uh, peers are saying, these young people don't know what they're doing. That's and I'm like, sure oh, no, d- don't do that. You're turning into your dad. George Carlin is one of my favorite yeah. comedians. And he was somebody who I think got, he was at his very best when he 
died. I think he just kept getting better. Yeah, yeah. He went strength to strength to strength. I remember I was uh, in seventh or eighth grade. It's like 1828. And my mom, for some reason, either bought me or let me have Class Clown, classic mm. record of his, and Occupation Fool with an E. Uh, he said, I put an E at the end just to piss people just off. Fool, and yeah. I memorized the records, memorized them, like the, all of it, all the commas and the pauses. And I would say the things to kids at summer camp to avoid getting punched out. And so he was always a big deal for me. I'm older than you by about like eight months. And so years ago, I was at MTV in New York in the 90s, and I just did an interview with Matt Pinfield. And I'm leaving the building, and one of the people backstage says, uh, George Carlin is in the green room, and he wants to talk to you. And I was in such a state of disbelief, I said, George Carlin, the comedian? Like, yeah, there's two. not just some I, guy. I just didn't think that was going to be. And so I went back there, and there's George Carlin standing in this green room and I walked in I was like Mr. Carlin he said call me George I went okay and I shook his hand and he said you did an in-store Tower Records the other night I said yeah he said I stood in line with one of your books to get it signed but the line was too long I got cold and I went home and I said you stood in line you're George Carlin just walk in and he, he said I can't do that kind of thing man and then uh, I said man I gotta ask you a question there's a great biography about Lenny Bruce it's a must read and uh, I said, there's a great story in there about Lenny Bruce gets busted. The cops are waiting for him to say right. something. So they, they nailed him on a word. And you were in the club as an underage person. And they, they handcuffed you guys together and put you in the back of the same police car. You know, is that, and that's how you met Lenny Bruce. Is that true? And he said, yes and no. That happened. I was handcuffed with Lenny Bruce. Wow. But, which is a story in itself. I mean, that's just so amazing, especially to hear it from Carlin. But he said, that's not the first time I met him. He said, I'd met him before because he would gather all the young comics around him and go, okay, give me your best stuff. And he would grade us and help us. We would all just like do our routine. And he'd go, no, 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 cut that part out. That, that's not good. Say that up here. Go faster. And he said he was super generous with his time. And he was just a very... Uh, always willing to help a young comic on his way up. Man, that's awesome. And it clearly rubbed off on uh, George Carlin, who turned out to be not only a cool guy, but one of arguably the coolest guys. Yeah. And I, I walked out of that building. I was just like, because, uh, you know, in our line of work, you meet, you know, interesting people or well-known people now and then. But that one, that's where I, I just kind of stared at my hand on the subway. Like, I, I just shook George Carlin's yeah, hand. Yeah, it doesn't just, get much better. I just had a second with George Carlin. Yeah, that was a big damn deal for me. I was supposed to see him in high school in Buffalo, New York, and uh, his gig got canceled because there was a massive snowstorm. Yeah, upstate New York. I started going there a lot uh, in rock and roll. I saw you there and, uh, a couple times. Oh, thanks. I'm forgetting, it's like, Buffalo or Albany, we get we play the show, and the owner we did wasn't very nice to us, and the audience wasn't very nice to us, and they I got pulled off stage, and people started kicking me and stepping on me, and you know that wasn't any good. What so year I, was this? this Eighty two. I'm gonna go back and okay. The, so I yeah, I'm gonna talk to some people. And that's, so yeah yeah, straighten cool. these people out, man. You go back the the conquering artists. You go back. Everyone was applauding at the Greyhound station. Yeah, to get out hold of the bus. on. I got something to say. Nineteen eighty two. Henry Rollins, you treated him poorly. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, I'm loading the gear out of the truck, uh, out to our, our miserable van after the show because I'm the road crew. And so I'm loading the gear, and there's this guy who's beating me up inside, and he's standing next to the van. And I walk by me, like, you suck. I'm like, thanks. I got to load the gear or we're never getting out of here. So I kept walking by him, and he kept calling me a name, but he wasn't trying to hit me. He was just, and I'm like, thank you, sir. I, I don't care. I got to load the van. And so at one point, I'm walking by him with like the kick drum or something. And a guy walks, like the van was where you are. I'm walking towards you. A guy walks this way, walks up to this guy and kind of punches him in the stomach and keeps walking. Like, and you're like, what was, oh, sorry, buddy. I'm okay. Um, that was like some black belt <laughs> stuff. Anyway, he just kind of pops him and walks by. I'm like, okay. And the guy was drunk and he didn't notice. And so I grab some more gear and come out and actually tell a story. Yeah, it's, yeah. Wait a minute. Okay, map it out. So 
right here, I walk by him, and he's got a white T-shirt on. And I see this ever-expanding dot of blood. And I realized that guy had walked by and stabbed, stabbed him. him. But I still had gear to load. So I didn't say anything because I still had to get the rest of the, you know, the gear. And so all these punk rockers, like all eight of them, were in the parking lot watching this guy bleed. And it just got bigger and bigger. I'm not kidding you, man. This is true. And the the last time I walked by him, it was it was it kept going because he was you know not bleeding to death. Thankfully, I don't want the guy to die. No, but no. he got stuck. Um, wow. And so the last thing he said to me, he looked at me and he gave me this weird non sequitur. He said, "It's cool." <laughs> I went, "Okay." And the next day we were in Canada. We drove up for a show in Ottawa. It was my first time in Canada. I was 21. And so we found out later, like we were back there like six months later. And we found out that that guy was so drunk, we had a good fat layer, but he didn't feel it. Probably, hopefully wow. it was a little blade. Sure. So he didn't feel it. So he stopped at a gas station liquor store convenience mart to get some beer. And the guy behind the counter said, you're bleeding. And that's how he found out he was stabbed. But wow. he got in his car and he drove away. Man, he must have just been, he had, must have had such a padding of Labatt Blues and, and chicken wings. And, 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 and wings and rock and roll. Rock and roll, rock baby. And roll. The ultimate shield. Yeah. Wow. Well, that, that happened. That's, and that's, that's my memory of it right there. I've never expressed it artistically before. This is it. This that's is, it. This is Buffalo hospitality. I mean, I've done it as, as free dance. You know? Sure, right. Free dance, you do it, but yeah. It, yeah. And now it's wow. naked. In front oh, of well, you got it. I mean, it's not. Preschool. It's it was not... a first time offense, so I didn't do time. I just did the home. Uh, the sure, home they give you the ankle bracelet for a couple weeks. Which it's... I chewed off, as you do. They're easily chewed. Yeah. They're easily chewed through. Well, I really like what you got going on here. Yeah, I'm kind of done with you. I yeah. mean, that I've said. I, I said what I came here to say. Should we maybe just cap it off by signing our, oh, signing yeah. our work? Oh, yeah, hell yeah. Give you a nice S. You just, go, just go by. Uh, I'll just do SP. initials SP. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Hope it's not too cold. I I, I, I asked your crew to, to pre warm the paints. Thank you guys so much. It, it goes a long way. Because I, I didn't want you to start goose bumping. Guys, I really appreciate it. Wow. I don't want to seem like a diva, but I need my paints warmed, please. Yep, and you don't do stairs. No, carry me, please. Thank you. Yeah. Should we go over what we did to each other? Because I have an explanation. Please, yeah, tell me about it, yeah. Okay, well, um, besides the stab wound and my initials, uh, this, this, is, uh, uh, this is America right now. We're sad. We're crying, mm -hmm. and and this is a, a a nuclear blast that could come sooner than later with the way uh, our foreign policy is going. These uh, eighth grade sandbox threats, and uh, that's a little bit of uh, acid rain and fallout. Oh, okay. Yeah, and um, I just like the idea of a pink apocalypse. So that's why there's a little bit of a pink edge. Yeah, you never hear about a pink apocalypse. Right, so it's, it's, it's kind nice. of fire, but it's, it's pink fire. And so you have the implied orange, the smoking gun. Boom, it goes right to your chest as the mushroom cloud. Well, I, you know, I've, it's, it's a beautiful apocalypse. All right, so I'll just kind of take you through what I've, what I've done here. I just sort of gave this uh, spider sort of a, just sort of a candy, candy cane house to live in. Oh, um, terrible of you. Yeah, and then of course we got a big sunflower coming out of the navel area. I added some windows just because we are in a windowless room here. Right. Um, sort of some rib lines. You're an artist. You just paint the windows. Yeah, you paint the windows and then you, you look through those windows. Boom, you're done. You save on heating and cooling too. Um, over here we got a little alien with red eyes kind of looking down, maybe watching the apocalypse, and right. either laughing or crying, right. depending. Um, oh, of course we got the Wi-Fi uh, symbol up here <laughs> yeah, so yeah, you are yeah. connected okay. if anyone needs to. I'm on the to. 3G network. Yeah, you could hook up your phones to I that. I need an upgrade. Yeah. We can, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll get, get you on LTE. Yeah. All right, so we got a dinosaur, of course, biting your neck here. <laughs> it's a purple dinosaur, but not not Barney the dinosaur. This is a more ferocious one. This is just sort of a shit-colored arrow pointing to your other nipple, because uh -huh. uh, I just wanted to try the brown. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think that about covers it. And yeah. then, of course, we got our, our signature right there. 
Well, Henry, I just want to thank you again so much for uh, coming in and painting with me. I hope you guys at home took off your shirts and painted along with us. And hey, bring it in. Oh, Bud, you're yeah. warm. Oh, yeah. And it's oh, ice cold in here, that's too. That's the uh, most action I've had in months. Hey, now. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the one and only, the man himself, Henry Rollins. We'll see you next time.